Okay, we're going to talk today about swageless terminals, uh, specifically the type of swageless terminals that we stock here at Techni. Uh, there are slightly different types on the market. Some of them you have to actually open the strands of the cable up to put the little uh, cones in to make them secure. This particular type, the cone fits on the outside of the cable. So we've got three different cable constructions here, all the same diameter. And we're going to fit exactly the same fittings to each one. And then we're going to take them out to our test rig and give them a pull just to show you how strong these fittings are. On the other end, we're going to put um, a swage fitting, a swage eye fitting. Again, the same fitting on each cable. And this is a 5 mil cable. So um, this will actually be hydraulically swaged in our factory, this fitting. So we'll also show you us doing that as well. This is a 119 strand. This is the sort of thing you use on yachts and yacht rigging and architectural uh, tensioning applications and straining applications, things like that. So not a particularly flexible cable, but here's a little swage fitting that I'm going to pull on. It's a swage eye, this one, so that they come in jaw fittings and threaded fittings and things like that. So I'll just take this apart. So just show you what's inside this thing. There's basically the uh, the gripper jaws or the um, the actual little cone jaws that actually go inside the fitting. So these basically slide over the cable and they're pulled into this little wedge shaped cup type fitting here. And the harder you pull on the cable, the more these little conical jaws are actually forced into the cone inside the fitting. So it just gets tighter and tighter in there until eventually something will go bang, but they're very, very strong fittings. There's also with this type of fitting, there's a little brass compression ring here. Now that just sits on top of the jaws. And as you screw the terminal back together, it helps push that down inside the, uh, inside the, the little body. So, and there's a little eye fitting. Now you see in there, there's actually a little recess there. Now that's actually to take the dead section of cable that sticks out of the end of the actual gripper. So just to assemble them. First thing to remember, particularly if you've got a long length of cable, is don't forget to put the body on before putting the gripper jaws on, which can actually uh, quite easily happen. So these little things basically just slide straight over the cable, like so. And the cable just pops out the other end here, there. Like that. So you'll see that kind of drops inside there like that. Then this little ring just sits on top of that. So this compression ring. Now, the best practice is to have a, at least five mil of cable sticking out, but you can't really go much more than a five mil because actually then the fitting will start to interfere with the top of the cable, but also you don't want much less. So between three sixteenths in, in uh, Imperial and five mil of actual visible cable sticking out the top. So then you just settle that into the fitting You'll see the cables just kind of prowl at the top of the fitting. And then screw the fitting in and you'll feel straight away it's starting to actually meet the, the compression ring inside. This little nut here is basically to lock the fitting off once, once you've got the desired um, compression. Now you'll see a lot of videos people put them into vices and things like that. In the field you might not have a vice so I'm just going to do it with spanner and screwdriver so fairly rudimentary tools but they'll do the job so to get the spanner on the flats there and get the screwdriver in and then just tighten it up now what this is doing is this is forcing that pressure ring onto the uh, onto the gripper jaws inside the terminal okay I can feel that's going really tight now so There you go. So you tighten it as much as you can by hand. That's really the best rule of thumb. There you go. Now, good practice with these is, is just to leave them for about five minutes, five, ten minutes after you've first done the first tension on them. And that lets everything kind of bed in on them. You can make them permanent by putting thread lock inside them and also some people put silicone inside to actually make them more watertight if you're using in a marine application. That obviously makes them much harder to get apart if you ever want to take them apart again. 
If you do ever take them apart again, you can reuse the fitting, but you need to make sure you change those insides, those little gripper jaws and the pressure ring. They won't take another fitting. Uh, they'll definitely lose effectiveness. So it's really important you get a spare set if you're actually going to change that fitting. But you can use all the body parts of it, so that's not a problem. So we'll leave that for five minutes, come back and tighten it up, and then we'll go and fit some ends on the other cables and test them in our factory. Okay, so we're back after five minutes. Uh, we've fitted all the swathes of ends onto all the different types of cable construction. Just going to give them a quick last tighten up because they do bed in a bit and um, it is just good practice just to give them that final tighten. You'll notice that on the different types of construction, and we'll zoom in on this for you, that the actual, there you go, so we're getting a bit more tightness out of that. There. On the different types of construction, the, um, the top part goes in further on some. Now, that, this is because this 119 strand is quite a hard cable. There's basically not much air inside this cable, hence the reason it's not so flexible. The 7.7 is more flexible, but actually, again, it's, it's quite hard to compress. And the 719 cable is much more flexible, so um, the actual fitting's gone in a lot further. But you'll feel they'll, they'll max out as hard as you can by hand when you try and tighten them. They're, they'll go in and that'll, that's it, they'll bed out and you won't get them any further in. So that, that's as much as you need to do to put them in. Now what we're going to do with these is just lock them off. So that's a little lock nut going down. On there. So they're all done. And then on the other end of these we're going to um, put these swages eyes. Now what they are is basically a compression fitting. So you do need hydraulic force to actually fit these. Um, so basically these things, they just literally slide on the cable and then we hydraulically swage this section of the shank. So we either hexagon swage it or round swage it in our factory. And we also do tools that enable you to swage these on site. So um, you can check those out on our website. We'll put a link to those tools. So, you know, they are, uh, they are possible to fit on site, but you do need special equipment to do it. Again, best practice with these is just make sure you mark the cable before you put it in so that you actually know that you've got the full depth in there because there is no other indication to actually tell you how far the cable's gone in. Okay, so we're going to go out to our factory and swage these now and then test them. Okay, so we're out in our factory now with our 150 ton swager. Uh, like I said, we do do tools that will actually um, fit these swage fittings on site. So this has got hexagon dies in it and Again, best practice with these things is push the cable in to the fitting, hold it there and hold it alongside the fitting and then you just put a mark on the fitting like that. That shows where the hole ends and the solid material begins. Now some swage fittings actually have a mark on them anyway, these particular ones don't. So then mark the cable as well so that you know once you push it in you've got the right depth of cable in there. So you can see there, that's, that's two mark points on there. What I'm going to do is just start our machine up. And then where the actual solid material comes out of the fitting, there, that's going to be at the edge of the die. So that's not going to get compressed because that is just literally trying to squash solid bar. And um, what you'll find there is actually bend the fitting. It will cause a bend. It will squash it. but. Um, it's definitely not good practice. So I squashed it hexagonally and I'm just going to turn it there, do 90 degrees and then give it another compression. You'll see there, you might see there's just a little tiny bit more extension in the fitting. So that second turn is important. So there you go. So that's, that's hydraulically swaged on there now. 